Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the content of A-Level Maths. Here we're looking at the interquartile range so we can answer questions from exercise 2D. Now hopefully interquartile range is familiar to you. We're just going to apply the interquartile range using the linear interpolation technique that we learned in the previous video. So just to go through the basics here, the range is the difference between the largest and the smallest value and it represents how spread out our data is. The interquartile range, however, measures the difference between the upper and the lower quartiles and measures the spread of the middle 50% of data or the most average 50% of data. So it's, it's a way of effectively measuring the spread of data without taking into account the outliers that can appear in our data. And a new word for you here, the interpercentile range is the difference between two given percentiles. For example, the uh, 20th percentile and the 80th percentile. So let's have a look at completing a question um, such as this. So the table on the right shows the mass of 120 African elephants. Find estimates for the range, the interquartile range, and the 10th to the 90th percent interpercentile range. Okay, so let's have a look at the range first. So the range is the easiest one. The minimum value it could be is 4. The maximum value it could be is 6.5. So 6.5 take away 4 equals 2.5. So 2.5 here is the range. It's not from 4 to 6.5. It's 2.5 is the range. Okay, the interquartile range now. So here we're going to have to use the um, method of linear interpolation. So... First thing we do, we've worked out we've got continuous data, so we apply the rule of 120 divided by 4 equals 30. So we're going to look for the 30th piece of data. And then we'll look what group it's in. It's definitely going to be in this second group here that contains up from the 14th value to the 36th value. Okay. So now what we're going to do is apply linear interpolation. So remember it's this formula here. It's the lower bounds of this group here plus the place in the group that it, the 30th value is going to be uh, divided by how many items we have in our group, the group frequency, and times by the class width, which is 5 here. So in this case, we're going to substitute in the values. 4.5 is the lower bounds of the group. We're going to go 17 um, data values into this group. We've already had 13 above. We want to go to the 30th data value, so the 17th value inside this group. Out of 23 va data points in this group, so effectively we're going this fraction into a group that's 0.5 wide. The class width here is 0.5. So sub that into your calculator and calculate it and you get 4.87. So that's the lower quartile. We now need to work out the upper quartile and do one subtract from the other. So a very similar technique. Find three quarters of 120. Work out which group that's going to be in and apply your linear interpolation formula. So in this case here, it's going to be a lower bound of 5.5 plus it's going to be the 23rd value into this group. Here it's the 90th value. and We've already had 67 data points before this point here. Out of 34 data values in this group here, times by the class width of 0.5, and we get a final answer of 5.84. So that's our upper quartile, 5.84, and lower quartile, 4.87. And the last thing for us to do is just do one subtracted by the other. So we get 0.97, um, it will be in tons um, as the interquartile range there. For the 10th to 90th percentile, it's basically the same thing, but we're just going to find um, the 10% marker of 120 and do some linear interpolation on that. So it's going to be in the group, uh, in the first group up here with a lower bound of 4.0. It's going to be the 12th value into this group out of 13 data points with a class width of 0.5. So we're going to get 4.46 here. Just a little reminder, if your linear interpolation method then gives you a value that's outside of your range of values in your class width, and you've definitely done something wrong here, just do a little double check. It's 4.46, and that's inside the range of uh, values in here. And it's going to be the, probably, yeah, it's high up in that group, isn't it? Because it's the 12th out of 13th data value. For the P90 or the 90th percentile, find the 90% mark of 120 find which group that's going to be in 
and then apply linear interpolation as well. So it's the 17th data value into this group out of 19, class width of 0 0.5, add on to the lower bounds of 6.0, and you get your final answer, 6.18. So the percentile range is going to be 6.18, take away 4.46, and we get 1.72. OK, then your turn to have a go at a question here. Pause the video and try this one out. OK, then well done for having a go at this question. Let's uh, try it together then. Calculate the 34% and the 66% interquartile range, interpercentile range, sorry. So with this question here, it's going to be, um, let's just top them up as we go along first. So 27, uh, 27 add 28 gives me 55 and then 55 add 15 is 70. So in this case here to find the 34 percentile range I'm going to do 34 divided by 100 times by 70 and this will give me the data value that I'm going to receive so 0 0.34 times 70 which will give me 23.8. So I want to find the 23.8 data value. So this is going to definitely be in this group here. So applying my formula, that's lower bound plus place in the group divided by group frequency times by class width. And this is going to be 1000 add the place in the group. We've already had three data values up until here. So the place in this group is going to be the 20.8 data value out of 24 times by the class width here which is 100 and type this into your calculator 20.8 divided by 24 times by 100 add on 1000 and you get 1086.6 recurring so we'll write 0.7 OK, and now for the 66th data value, so 0 0.66 times 70. So you could have either done it the fraction way or the decimal multiplier way. 0 0.66 times 70 data values is 46.2. So we're going to look for this um, data value inside these groups. Now the 46.2nd value is definitely going to be in this group here. <coughs> so applying the... Um, the uh, calculation here is going to be 1,100 add. Now, we've already had 27 data values up until here. So 46.2 take away 27. And we're going to be looking at the 19.2nd data value here out of 28 data values times by the class width of 100. So in this case here, we're going to do 19.2. 17.2 divided by 28 times by 100, add on to 1,100, and we get 1,168.57, so we'll call it 0.6. So now the interpercentile range will be 1 subtracted by the other, so 1168.6. Subtract 1086.7, and here we're going to get 81.9. Okay, there we are. So that's the uh, interpercentile range there. Estimate the number of data values that will fall in this range. Well, it's probably going to be approximately a third of the data values and a third of 70 is going to be um, 70 divided by 3 will give us about 23 data values. Okay. Right, well, thank you very much for having a go at this question here then. So uh, do plenty more questions on this on exercise 2D. Linear interpolation is a difficult technique and it does need lots of practice. Make sure you persevere through those difficult questions and ask your teacher for help if you need any. Thanks very much for watching.